Hallelujah. <laughs> Alright, this is a poem I wrote entitled The Train of Thought. I was headed to class one day while reading the Holy Quran. I walked into the subway that day and sat across in this very strange land. I felt his gaze upon the back of my neck and began to wonder, who is this examiner? Is he just another Mr. I don't like today's youngsters, or could he possibly be one of yesterday's philosophers? Just as the thought boarded the bus headed toward the far reaches of my mind, I quickly dropped the thought at the bus stop before it began to climb. He spoke. He asked me if I would like to buy a DVD, a CD. I stared at him, ready to speak words unkind for taking up just a few moments of my time, but instead I held my tongue. I simply said, I am not interested. I reopened my Quran and began to embed its words within my head, but again he spoke, only this time asking me if I would like to buy some oil. My blood came to a boil once I realized this guy interrupted my deep breathing for some tea boil. Keep in mind, the day that this happened, I was running low on time. I mean, I know this man is a barter hoping to gain another customer, but I had no intention on becoming a buyer, especially from someone in a subway who could have easily been an old hustler from the street corner. So once again, I faced the other way. However, it seemed he had something more to say and interrupted me again. That was when I gave up on reading and put my book away. I then accepted his invitation for conversation, only now I had this ingrained aversion toward him. He pointed at my Quran and said, you are a very intelligent young man. Is that the Holy Quran which you hold in your hand? Would you like to gain some knowledge of this world that will help you understand it as it begins to expand? I replied with the words of a normal American young man, thank you kind sir, but no, I'm fine. He then became annoyed and complained. You see, this is the problem with today's youth. You never have the time to enlighten your minds. You're following a system which was precisely designed to control and destroy the mind. If that's so, enlighten me, I demanded. Free my mind from the shackles of curiosity. Assist me so that I too might escape this world's captivity. He then questioned, can you name any of the great African civilizations? I was caught off guard and therefore could not bring any to his attention. Sensing I was stuck, he answered his own question, naming many of the great civilizations, one in particular being Egyptian. They have succeeded in their plans to grant you education but withhold valuable information. I stared at him, bewildered, he went on. They do this all without any hesitation. Their goal is to so their goal is to slow the black man's progression, but wait. Now, it's not just them, but the progression of the entire population. They lock us all in a dark and embark on a quest given to them by their powerful patriarch. Their objective of this mission is to conceal the truth from our vision, trapping us in a state of confusion, using any means necessary to keep all traces of it hidden from our vision. All this is done to pave the way for that day that King will come and lead them the right way. I will say more, but you mustn't take all this in at one time, for it can imprison and ruin the mind, leading you away from that fine straight line. Besides, I've been talking for years, and your train is here. Oh, one more thing before you go. Never, ever doubt all that you know, and always be eager to learn that which you do not know. Never turn down knowledge, for that is the only thing which can release you from bondage. Thank you.